My name is Beth Sackerson and I am your tenure representative on the WISPA Educational Council. Today we're talking about quick ways to improve your tenure core. The first thing I like to do when I'm working with a new group is I assess their individual abilities. Then I make sure that everyone's on the same page in terms of flourish positions. Flourishes can be placed at different heights to provide visual variety. I start with defining high, mid, and low levels. Since players have to hit these spots repeatedly, I define these using landmarks on either my body or the drum. Low level is fairly straightforward. If the flourish is at the center line, then low is easily defined as just above the drum. But how about when the flourish is off to the side? You need to define where the low boundary is. Is it at the same height as the drum, or is it completely down at the side of the player? Keep in mind that the lower the flourish is, the longer it's going to take to reach and recover from. This is important to keep in mind if the music is fast or if your players are not strong or fast enough themselves to get to the next flourish on time. Also, the lower the flourish, the less it's seen by the audience. High level is also something that differs significantly based on your player's shoulder range of motion, their strength and speed, or how you want your flourishes to look. Some bands want the arms straight up in the air near their ears. Other bands like to define high as how high the arms will go with the shoulders in a relaxed position. This naturally causes the arms to be slightly in front of the body and with a slight bend. Finally, some bands who have players with shoulder issues will define high as the upper arm extending straight out at shoulder height and the elbows bent at 90 degrees. Keep in mind that the higher the arm goes, the more energy it takes. This is important for things like time. So when making your determination on how you want that to look, make sure you keep your course fitness level in mind. Our band will oftentimes keep our arms nice and high in competition, but when it comes time for mass bands, we'll just drop it down to the 90 degrees in order to preserve our strength for the beer tent. The mid-level is best chosen after you define your high and your low. Obviously, middle is going to be between the two. Many cores define mid as being straight out from the shoulders. Others prefer face level. If your high is the one where the arms are bent at 90 degrees, you may want to define mid a little lower, like have the mallet heads at the level of the shoulders. Next, you want to determine where on the midline you want to place your single-handed flourishes, such as back spins or flats, amongst other things. When I first learned, I was taught the box method where the flourishes were placed directly in front of the shoulders, but the more modern approach is to use the midline. Either the head of the mallet or your hand passes through the midline as you change from hand to hand. Next, look at your straight arm techniques such as time. Will your arm go straight up above the shoulder or tilt toward midline? Finally, decide how wide you want your stalls or other overhead techniques to be. The width of your head is a common guide for this. I think the box method is easier for beginning players who haven't yet learned to relax their hands to be able to control the spin trajectory. So they find it easier to have their arms out here in order to get, especially like back spins. It doesn't matter which one of those you choose, uh, although midline is really the, the thing that people are aiming for these days. It doesn't matter. As long as everyone's doing the same thing, perfect. Review each of your staple flourishes and make clear decisions on their placement. Use your body and drum landmarks to make these as consistent as possible and then drill them regularly so that everyone is on the same page. The last thing we want to do is make sure your players are familiar with the four directions of flourishing. Forward, meaning toward your audience. Backward, which is towards you. Inside, which is toward the midline and outside, boop, which is away from midline. We all have these cute names for our flourishes, but to be able to break them down into the four main flourish directions is really helpful, not just for communicating the flourish to other people, but also uh, it helps with timing. So you make sure you're doing the correct part of the flourish at the correct time.